I got asked to give a speech at the Loxton Garden Club, which I thought was pretty cool. And I reckon that was pretty awesome. So I'll be able to talk about pollinators and stuff that needs to happen in the gardens. But I got a phone call from the secretary and she got all excited saying, what are you down to talk about? We're not beekeepers. And I thought, yes, but you have a plant to play in looking after pollinators. And you know, I mean like this beautiful bush here. And then I got thinking, maybe if the garden club has a bit of influence, perhaps they could talk to the council. Because the council, even by accident, has planted these lovely flowers that the girls are enjoying. So how good's that? So just imagine if they proactively planted some flowers for the girls to enjoy. We would have a pollinator paradise. The ladies really love these bottle brushes. I mean, this is a bit of a long flowering bottle brush. This has been flowering for a good month now, and it's still at it and the girls are all over it. And I'm fairly sure they weren't actually planted just for the bees in mind, because they look really awesome too. And I just think that's really groovy. And it's funny how when you start beekeeping, how you start thinking about what flowers are doing what. Of course, as you know, not all plants are created equal. The ladies are having a bit of a nibble on this one here, but it's not as popular as that. But that's not the point. A lot of the time, as long as there's some nectar and some pollen, the bees will figure out what they actually need back at their home. So. I reckon there's a real possibility that we could have an influence and turn ourselves into a pollinator town. Because the Xerxes Society in America, they have pollinator towns and pollinator universities. I'm thinking we could start our own little pollinator chapter here, right here in Loxton. I've said before not all flowers are created equal but from what I can gather from the gossip train that some lovely lady or gentleman might have been I shouldn't be too obsumptuous anyway some lovely citizen has actually donated these little poppy plants to the council and the council gardeners have planted them out here and they look absolutely gorgeous by the way around the roundabout they look really cool but what about if we had something that looked just as pretty but it was also feeding the insects or feeding the bees for a start or any other native pollinators for that fact. So just a little bit of thought, and you never know, we could feed a whole box of bees, or maybe a whole colony of bees. Not necessarily for the beekeepers to, they do, but just to look after our pollinators, because we look after them, and they look after us. And of course, we planted some rosemary here at the Cross of Remembrance, so, I reckon that looks really cool, doesn't it? Looks really awesome, and it also feeds the bees. So I don't want to get on too much of a mad, mad bee frenzy, but I don't think it's a big stretch to actually plant stuff that's beneficial and looks amazing. Obviously, we're gonna have, can't have it all our own way. I mean, we've got to have an occasional pine tree like we have over here. Otherwise, you know, we might be getting a little bit obsessed. But how cool would that be? <laughs> I don't know. I reckon it'd be pretty cool, just because I love bees, I suppose, so hopefully I'm not too strange. Mind you, if we don't have insects, we might not have birds, and if we didn't have little birds that ate the insects, we might not have the bigger birds that ate the little birds, and the whole ecosystem would be all in all sorts of trouble without bugs. So just think about that. <laughs> Well, that's a beautiful big Banksia, isn't it? But would you believe that not all Banksias are created equal when it comes to a nectar source either? So how weird is that? I am not a botanist, so I'm not sure what exactly Banksia this is. But I can't see too many bees on it. So I don't think there would be any reason why we couldn't have planted a bee-friendly Banksia that could be, look at all that, food that could have been available. I'm not necessarily saying that we shouldn't plant Banksias. We should plant Banksias that are, that are better for the feeding. It's only a little tiny bit more research and it'd be the same thing with a better result. We've got a cool little old gum tree over here that I know should have the gels on it because that's a really good pink flowering <laughs> winter gum. So we'll sneak over there and have a look at that. Now I know this nice winter gum 
Not only do my little domesticated, well they're not really domesticated, not only do the European honeybees love this gum tree, our native pollinators love this gum tree because it's a bit rare to find nice food this time of year here. So I would take one for the team <laughs> and also say that we should plant trees that are good for the native pollinators. Doesn't hurt if the, you know, the honeybees that I like are getting some of that food as well, does it? I don't think. Is that a conflict of interest? Oh, I don't think so, because there's one of the girls right now. <laughs> Now, just in case anybody from our local government is actually watching this show, I actually aren't having a crack and go. I reckon you've done a bloody brilliant job, even if it is by accident. I'm just kind of thinking maybe we could got to sort of tip a little bit more towards being bee friendly and also being pretty. I mean, there, how good's that Gravilia look? And you've got it established. You went all this trouble of laying out these dripper lines, but the girls are established. And look at that, how good's that? So I'm, I'm giving you the thumbs up. I reckon you did an awesome job. I'd just like to be involved with helping you do an even better job. So somewhere around here, there's a fallen down house and I don't know where it is. So we might just go for a bit of a look and see if we can find it before the sun sets. Somewhere on this trail, we might wander over to the trail and see what we can find. Coming this way. <laughs> They're kind of cool, those markers, aren't they? With the blooming bits of wood and the limestone rock. I mean, the council went to a lot of trouble to make this garden. Tell you what, kind of cool. <laughs> I'm not sure how many people walk along this track. <laughs> now, I just might have to concede that this little gum tree is not technically the best nectar source, but it looks blooming awesome anyway, doesn't it? Let's check that wood out. Tell you what, oh, I reckon that looks pretty spectacular. You only got a few twigs at the top, but golly, it's worth it just for that trunk, isn't it? Anyway, sorry, I digress. What have we got? Pioneer caring for the future. Pioneers caring for the future. There's a cat's cry. That could be us, pioneers caring for the future. We are pioneering our own future. What has it got to say for itself? I think I've made a bit of a leap. They were caring about educating their children, not necessarily saving bees, but I kind of think I'm going to steal that little saying, pioneers caring for the future. I don't know, do you reckon that'd be copyright? A bit like them bloody songs you won't let me sing? Anyway, just beyond here, there's, some, there's a little bit of controversy went on just over this little rise here. Dum, 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 dum. There was a little bit of excitement getting around the town when they built this house, because I think it cost more than a real house, and then they had to knock it down, so they built a house. Then they, well, they didn't build a real house completely, but they built a big enough of a house and then they smacked it to bits so they could have a ruin. And it looked quite funny for a start because it was that jolly new that it, it didn't look like a ruin at all. It just looked like a brand new built wall thing. But I think we're 20 years on or so now and it's starting to look really cool because it's starting to get a little bit of old feel and it's constructed well enough that it's not going to fall down like an old ruin that was to this point would just be dust by now because it'll be washed away but it was probably why it was a bit weird ass because it didn't really look like a ruin because they had the cement to hold it all together <laughs> back in the day it would have just been lime and a bit of dust and crap so anyway it actually looks quite cool now we might go over there and have a bit of a read of what their concept was it's got over here stone run not stoned run it's stone run so we'll just go and have a read Loxton Community Conservation and Heritage Park. The stone up. Ah, oh, see, there you go. That got most lost in translation, didn't it? This is actually meant to be an artwork, not necessarily a falling down house that costs as much as a real house. It's a significant component of the overall park design. I wonder if this plaque was put up after they got shit taken and piss taken out of them. It's aimed to symbolise to uh, commemorate the important aspect of the local community environment, in particularly newly constructed stone house ruin. Now there you go. How do you have a newly constructed stone house ruin? I mean, I love it. Anyway, <laughs> and the timber also to form the cards, making the reference to the common practice of cereal farmers in the region of piling up rocks. They have cleared from their paddocks. Oh, that's why well, they were called stone cards because they were the pile of rocks. 
You see them around still with the great big piles of limestone that they had to dig up. And here it represents the major flood heights of the River Murray, the tallest representing the 1956 flood. The 1956 <laughs> flood, I'm glad I wasn't around for that effort. Oof. Apparently half of Renmark went underwater and the Loxton folk went over to help them to try and bridge their... They had their little TA-20s and their sandbags and little trailers and shit. Tell you what, if you could get some footage of that crap, it's pretty unreal. <laughs> pretty cool, really. <laughs> I wonder if that's a real chimney. It looks like a real chimney. Maybe we can get the cigarette lighter and light up this bit of bark and see if it's smoke comes out the top. Nah, the wife probably wants me home for dinner. I don't want to get arrested. Anyway, that's kind of cool, isn't that? I even decided to plant a jolly pepper tree to be, because all the old settlement houses around here had a pepper tree in the backyard because it was the only bloody thing that would stay alive. But. I like the fact they've got an accidental flowering gum falling into the falling down house. <laughs> That's kind of cool. <laughs> anyway, there you go. So you could build a house that wasn't really ever here and make it look like it was, as long as you've got enough time to wait. So here we are. Here we are in a house that never was. Actually here. I just had a brainwave whilst we were wandering down the park, wandering around a park that was in the medium strip. So I thought, you know, there's an old blooming sail yard out here somewhere that used to have all the sails. But now that the farmers sort of do their own thing and sell direct to the marketplace, they really don't hardly ever have sails anymore. So I was wondering, maybe, maybe, I don't even know who owns it. We might have to go and talk to the council and find out who actually owns the sail yards. And we could turn it into a, we could ask, pollinate a garden. So it would make it something cool that anybody interested in insects, well, hell, you wouldn't even have to be in interested. We could make a wonder if we could find out it's our own fallen down blooming bee house or something crazy ass like that. Or something to do with the sail yards. That's what we'd have to have. Something to remember the sail yards and complement the bees or insects. The lad said I'd be going to go in the cow yard, but I said it'd actually be a bull yard if I'm in here. Anyway, I'm, I'm just thinking, I wonder how the hell you'd get the hell out of here. Mm. What a cool place to have a garden, wouldn't it be? What would we call it? We could call it whatever the sail yard was called. Other than a sail yard, obviously, dipshit, but <laughs> we would be called something, surely. Wouldn't it be cool? We could have community veggie plots, and we could have a few blooming trees growing, and we could have little, what are those little twig things that you make for the native bees? A couple of bee boxes and so the kids could come and have a bit of a look around and talk about bees and talk about insects and talk about the role that, you know, that the whole ecosystem thing happens. Maybe we'll better write up a, what's that called when you write to the council? You make a submission or some shit. I could just be a slack brick and just send them this, <laughs> send them this episode. That might be a better idea. I started this whole conversation because I got invited to talk to the Garden Club. So maybe there'll be somebody at the Garden Club who writes, likes writing stuff. And we, they could make a submission and we could have a community garden in a cow pen. <laughs> you probably wouldn't even have to bring your own shit. Anyway, I'll see if I can get out of this yard. Hopefully I'm cleverer than a cow. Or a bull for that matter. <laughs> Please shut the gate. I was in pen 34 if anybody's interested. I was just thinking of a scene from the Six Million Dollar Man. And he saves the day! It's a rescue! Wee! Anyway, that was terrible. 